It's been a busy 48 hours for NFL teams across the league as we are now on the other side of the roster cut down. We're reacting to all of the cuts, all of the transactions here today on Locked On NFL Scouting. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I want to issue a big thank you, shout out, and welcome to our everydayers, Those of you who never miss a single episode, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. What time is it? It's Game Time. Mm. It's time for us here on this show, Joe, to react to a slew of moves, players that made teams, players that didn't make teams, uh, the waiver wire names that are interesting on the waiver wire roster cutdowns, UDFAs to make 53 initial 53 man rosters, some of the math juggling the teams are doing in order to keep the players they want to prioritize and putting non sustainable rosters on their initial 53. And of course, the Ernest Jones trade that got done yesterday. Should we start there with the Ernest Jones trade, Kyle Krabs? Probably because we have to start somewhere. And this feels like as good of a place that we can start. So go ahead. I'm pop a C4 open. I'm going to keep the energy high all show. Yeah. Let's go. You're familiar with the song, Give It Away by George Strait? No. Just give it away. Ernest Jones. Or just, just gave him away, man. Gave team away. captain. A team that had all the turnover on the defensive side of the football. Your veteran Mike linebacker. Team captain. They said, get out of here. We'll send you and uh, six. We'll get a five back. Bygones will be bygones. Sean McVay telling you it's a football decision. Short and long term, it's a football decision. Got all pissy on the press conference. This is weird, Kyle Krabs. Very snippy. And I, I think that's as good of a clue as you can get as for whatever reason, now was a good time for Ernest Jones and the Rams to go their separate ways. And we may never know all of the dynamics that were involved in that decision. Sean McVay alluded to as a short-term and long-term football decision. It's what was best for the team and got real short and real sassy about it when he was pressed about it in his press conference yesterday. I don't want the ire of Sean McVay, so like, and it'd be irresponsible to speculate on anything. Right. But from a player perspective, we looked at that player and we said, hey, maybe early day three pick. Might get it done. Right. And it ended up being a, a pick swap of a five and a six. Meanwhile, he goes to the Titans. Like, maybe a little bit of a golf clap here for the Tennessee Titans. I feel like that's a good trade for them. It's uh, one of our trade. questions was their linebacker. I know Jack Gibbons had shown some promise, and he's going to be relied upon this year. But Kenneth Murray, kind of the other guy in contention to start there. And I think Ernest Jones can step into that room and, and probably be their, their best option. And I think he's also a pretty good fit for the style of defense that they want to run. So, so hat tip to the Titans. I think it's a good trade for you. Listen, the, the spine of this defense in Tennessee now, Tavondre Sweat and Jeffrey Simmons with Ernest Jones playing behind them. And then you have Amani Hooker and Quandre Diggs. I'm, I'll mention the name Jamal Adams, but just know that I'm not really gassing up that acquisition for Tennessee. But like he exists. You look up the middle of this group. Yeah. They're really strong spine of this defense and then you consider Legarius Sneed and his acquisition on the outside and what is Chidobi Awuzie like how close can he get to a ceiling I don't know but you still have Roger McCreary uh, this was one of those teams that kind of did the the numbers game that you looked at and you're like that ain't gonna stay like that they have four corners on the 53 yeah Caleb but, Farley pour one out yeah but uh, some some flowers for Tennessee and the evolution now whether it all comes together with so much new is fascinating. We, we've gone over their early season schedule. It's a really tough slate early on. Yeah. 
But um, I think they have a chance to be that team late in the year that you don't want to see on your schedule if they get everything to click in place. Yeah, and shout out to Jarvis Brownlee, who's one of the mid-round corners that I really liked out of last year's draft class. I think for Tennessee, there's a lot to like. Your questions are, do we have enough edge rush? Do we have uh, – Is can the offensive line come together? You certainly love uh, the coaching there um, and Bill Callahan to be able to help with that. Yeah. And how does Will Levis acclimate to this offense? It, big questions, but at the same time, I think this defense is going to give them a, a reasonable floor and then I think there's going to be some fun elements to this offense. Like, yeah, Tennessee's not a pushover. I don't know that I'm going to predict them to go to the playoffs, but I think it's going to be a reasonable football team. I uh, I believe I saw they have Tyus Bowser coming in for a visit now, too. Okay. And he's obviously familiar with this defense with Denard Wilson being in Baltimore, yeah. and that's where Bowser was when he was a good player. Now, unfortunately, injuries have kind of taken their toll there, but... I mean, you're, you're talking about potentially Arden Key avoided suspension, which is massive for them with the appeal. So that helps them out in that regard from an edge rush perspective anyway. And then if you got Bowser and Rashad Weaver as your your 3-4 guys on your rush rotation, would you ideally like another guy? Yeah. Do I think you can get by with it if the guys stay healthy? For sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ernest Jones, to start things off, Kyle, I got a list a mile long. I know you do too. What do you want to get into next? Um, why don't you give me your next biggest headline in the last 24 hours? Oh God. Uh, I'll just pick something. How about the jets rostering three undrafted free agents for their defensive line? I'm glad you mentioned this. Um, it's pretty, pretty exciting for them on one hand, but I also think it speaks to something that you have mentioned, uh, on more than one occasion on this show, which is like the, the depth of this jets team is a little suspect on defense in particular. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so Leonard Taylor, which I mean, we all know Leonard Taylor's had a lot of promise. It just hasn't really come together. No question. He had a great preseason earns, earns a roster spot here. Uh, Brandon McGregor toolsy dude out of Michigan makes it. And then Eric Watts, who's probably the player I'm least familiar with out of this group, but talk McKinley also makes this roster. And I know he had a pretty good preseason as well. So a lot of new names here for this jets, defensive line i know like if they can figure out something with reddick that will be huge but quite a bit of transition for what has been such an important part of this team being able to be a seven win team the last two years yeah. despite atrocious offense so we'll see how that comes together so how about how about leonard taylor i mean when you, when you look at the defensive interior for this group it's quinn williams and solomon thomas and i made a decision not to mention javon kinlaw in the first two names Right? Those are the top three guys. There's a lot of opportunity for a guy like Leonard Taylor, who this time last year I looked at and said, man, he's he's got potential first round physical talent. Yeah. And it never really came together because Miami had him playing on the nose. Right. Out of position. It sounded like he, you know, in, in the midst of all of that, uh, didn't necessarily ingratiate himself to the coaching staff throughout that process. It clearly dogs him through the pre-draft process because he goes undrafted. This was not an undraftable talent in the draft All right. who, who slid for lack of talent. So from the Jets' perspective, the, it, it's really exciting to for me to think about Leonard Taylor playing behind Quinnen Williams and Solomon Thomas as a guy who can learn from those guys but then can apply the physical tools and the fact that he did go undrafted you're either going to fold your cards on that or you're going to step up to the plate on that. And if he's got the fire lit under him, I think that could go down as like a, a total steal for the Jets. The contrast of Leonard Taylor as a UDFA versus Mason Smith as a top 50 pick. You know, you know, like how do you reconcile that type of stuff, man? It's kind of crazy. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay, that's our initial stuff to get into. A lot more, so be sure to stick with us. Purchasing tickets for an event can be stressful, but it doesn't have to be. If you have the Game Time app, you need to download it. Download the Game Time app. It's the fast and easy way to purchase tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. I love the app. It's easy to navigate. They give you flash deals. They specialize in last-minute ticket specials, which is great because you don't always know if you'll be able to go to an event, but... If you want to make a last-minute decision to go, go to the Game Time app. They're going to have great deals 
available for you. They give you a seat view. Plus, you can choose to turn on the all in pricing. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL. That's L O C K E D O N N F L for twenty dollars off. Download the Game Time app today. What time is it? Game time. Game time. I'd like you and I and everyone listening or watching the show to raise your glass. Hmm. What about my Gatorade bottle? It's great. So you might want to put the cap on because I'm oh. going to ask you to pour one out for Desmond Ritter. <laughs> okay. So I, I guess this draft class in general is, is a storyline for Desmond Ritter has now had two teams throw up the hands and say, you know what? No, thank you. Clayton Toon is going to be our backup quarterback in Arizona for a player in Ritter who had a very successful college career at Cincinnati, was in the conversation for the, uh, I'm going to use air quotes here, best quarterback in the 2022 NFL draft, which saw Kenny Pickett go in the first round. Nobody else go until the third round, and that's where you had Ritter and Matt Corral and Malik Willis and Malik Willis got traded to Green Bay for a seventh round pick, and Ritter got traded to Arizona and then got cut. And Matt Corral's been on four teams already. And um, you always have the debate about middle class quarterback prospects and their merit as far as like when it makes sense to draft a guy or when it doesn't make sense to draft a guy. And if you're drafting a guy in a certain range, should you really be drafting him? Because that means there's probably questions that would prevent him from being what you would want when you draft a quarterback with a, a certain caliber of pick. And I guess I thought now was a good time to revisit that conversation because we did see Malik Willis get traded. Matt Corral got brought back by Minnesota, Minnesota for a cup of coffee. Um, Desmond Ritter was, there are a lot of people in this industry who I have respect for their opinions on who really like Desmond Ritter. They thought he would be a, a quality starting quarterback, and it hasn't happened. Kyle, is, is, um, is Skylar Thompson and Brock Purdy the only two quarterbacks from that draft that are still on the team that drafted him? Still with their original team, yeah. The last two. Correct. Pick 247 and pick 262. Yeah. Pickett, Ritter, Balik Willis, Corral, Bailey Zappi, who has been released, Sam Howell has been traded, Chris Oludekun. He's not on the Steelers anymore. Nope. Skylar Thompson, Brock Purdy. Yeah. Boy. They, some, some people say draft a quarterback every year, Kyle Krabs. You know, <laughs> and there's there's probably something to be said about developmental upside and coveting physical traits. And well, that was the appeal on Kenny Pickett was he was an athlete. And it was the appeal on Desmond Ritter. He is the big time arm with a prototypical size. And you got Skylar Thompson, who's my size, like 6'1", 200, and Brock Purdy, who's six foot. Was he 210? Like, not yeah. big guys with not big arms. Um, from the Big 12, RIP, the old – I'm going to use the old school Big 12 because it's yeah. no longer the Big 12. I got to learn the conferences. That's part of my my, <laughs> on my agenda today. I figure out what teams and which conference. Um, Yeah, man, it, it's, it's a really fascinating case study on quarterbacks for how that class has turned out with all of the questions. And – Look, we went through that draft process. We were full-time in the draft in that that cycle. And how hard of a time did we have identifying a player that we really liked at quarterback? We, we, we never did. You talk yourself into like things about these guys that you're like, okay, if it's going to work, that's what we're point to. But neither, neither you nor I had a first-run grade on any of these guys. Correct, which is probably a – you don't got to talk yourself into it. Right, and we'll see what this year's draft right. class has. That's great advice, but right there. Don't don't talk yourself into it if you don't see it. Right, because this is the case study for every 2020 class where you got five guys that all hit. And Joe, you can even go back to the 2021 class. That's what I was waiting to kind of get to. I think those yeah. two class, those two quarterback classes, kind of yeah, it set, it set back the quarterback landscape. I think that's why you have so many teams in the spot that they are. Is that 
we just didn't get enough out of two consecutive draft classes to help replenish the landscape of the league. So tough scene there. Okay, Kyle Krabs. I guess I'll take the next talking point here. Go right in. I would like to just lump in wide receivers. Can we? Like there's a Noah lot Brown. Of interesting names. Noah Brown, Terrace Marshall Jr., Kadarius Tony was released after the Chiefs traded a three and a five. I know he helped them win the Super Bowl with the punt return that Aaron Sipros line drive to him. Um you don't gotta do that. Come on, dude. I I was quarreling <laughs> with the Chiefs fans that. for half the day yesterday. All I heard about is that Kadarius Tony and MVS have two Super Bowls. Why didn't they keep them? Why? I mean, if the Chiefs don't, who, who cares if they have two Super Bowls? What, what, what fans, argument are they trying to make? Cal, this is all I want to say: is if the Chiefs don't three peat, we'll always wonder if things could have been different if they still had MVS and Kadarius Tony. You know, I have, and I'm sure everybody who listens to this program is a very well grounded, no question, rooted no question. in reality individual and fan of their favorite team. But some of the insecurity that you see from Kansas city chiefs fan, it's like, okay, laugh, turn off your phone, go outside and think about winning the last two super bowls and three of the last five. And, and that you're probably going to win multiple again in the next five years. Right. What could possibly hurt you? Right. Like you, you're, it's expected to kiss, kiss the rings all the time. Don't, don't turn yourself into the Patriots. Because it, when, when helicopter in, away, baby. When Pat goes away, we want to be able to sympathize with you. <laughs> they they helicopter build, build. into every conversation they can, Kyle. Krabs. Right. Let's in, let's inject the the NFL world revolves around us, so let's inject ourselves into every conversation yeah. we can. Uh, meanwhile, you got Bill Belichick out here crying about Massachusetts on the Pat McAfee show. I'm like, Bill, I don't feel sorry for you one bit, brother. Yeah, but I do love post. I love Bill now that he's out of the league, man. He's he's so much better to me than Brady. I I strongly disagree. I know. Well, we could fundamentally disagree on that, but I'm team Bill. Post retirement, give me all the Bill Belichick I can get, and then Tom Brady can just, you know, you know disappear. Who's, you know who's doing a good job in media is Nick Saban. Oh yeah, yeah. I always like I anything Nick Saban has to say. I want to hear it. Yeah. I have very much enjoyed Nick's perspective. I gotta take. I think Nick's a better coach than Bill. Oh, Kyle Krabs, are you kidding? There's no question about that. I, I just he went to multiple probably, places and won championships with multiple different iterations of his teams. It's probably a hot take for some, but I... I oh, really? On the pantheon of like all coaches at all levels, I think Nick Saban's higher up than Bill Belichick. Oh, I think that's super true. I'm glad we can fundamentally agree on that. Wow, okay. That's cool. So who? I think the fun thing about these receivers is I think both you and I want one for our respective teams. Yes. We might want the same guy. I, I can't believe Sha Shavers didn't make the cut in Buffalo. I heard about how great of a Listen, camp he had. I don't know what to tell you. Can you believe that? But can you believe Ben DiNucci airmailed that maybe, ball? Maybe he should have caught that ball. He would have yeah. <laughs> Big red zone target falling all over um, himself trying to catch a wide open touchdown. I, I think the, the next observation that I had had with the cuts was you saw where teams were and weren't willing to take risks on retaining talent. How many teams kept 10 plus offensive linemen? A bunch. I'm sure you, you know the answer to that. Yeah, I don't know the answer. I, I don't have the exact number, but I know it, it seems like every team graphic, roster announcement that I've seen put out, teams kept like 10 offensive linemen. Yeah. Meanwhile, teams are keeping four corners, teams are keeping four wide receivers, teams are keeping what, how many running backs does Cleveland have right now? Is it two? Yeah, the receiver numbers are low across the league, it feels like. Yeah, so the Browns kept four quarterbacks and two running backs. Now, granted, Nick Chubb's not among the two running yeah. backs. Their, their active roster running backs are Jerome Ford and Pierre Strong right now. Four quarterbacks. Yeah, that's big. That's a big talking point I had down was the Browns keeping four quarterbacks. Let's get and it. I think, I, well, I mean, first of all, last year happened, right? That and teams are always going to overcorrect when something <laughs> like that happens, right? But Deshaun, can he? Right. Can he? Can he throw a football consecutive days? Is Jameis too good to cut? DTR too much promise because maybe he's your guy. Maybe he's your long-term guy if, if Watson can't get it together. And then Huntley can Pro Bowl quarterback, you know? So let, let's let agree. I think Jameis is too good to cut. Right. Do you agree with that? That's exactly what I say. Uh, I think DTR is too good to be the one that you part with because there's long-term potential there. Right. 
and he's also in the second year of a rookie contract as a day three pick. And you're looking at, and things don't work out with Deshaun Watson, and you really like DTR, and he develops in your system. You'd love to have two years of day three pick rookie contract at quarterback while you get through two years of dead cap for fully guaranteed contract to Sean 100%, Watson. 100%. If they're going to, can they get something for Tyler Huntley? I think I they, would, could prob- they could probably get a late, if Malik Willis gives for a seven, I would like to think Tyler yeah. Huntley, who's proven more at the NFL level, can, can get you a, a late day three pick too. Correct. Correct. So that's what I'm looking for. And it's like, Look, deadline spur action. We got to cut the roster down, but at the same time, I don't want to get rid of this asset that I really believe I can get something for just because I have to cut to 53. I'll cut something else that I feel like is more tangible for me to find an alternative with or bring a player back on the practice squad. Yeah. All right. Kyle Krabs will continue reacting to all the stuff that happened recently in the NFL on the other side of it. Be sure to stick with us. What do you got next? How about these kickers? Chad Ryland and Anders Carlson. Disasters as rookies, but on on waivers. A team never draft specialists now? Oh. No, I, I, I don't agree with that. Um, just draft the right ones, right? <laughs> draft the good I mean, ones. Kicker feels like such a high variance position, though. It's killing me, yeah. You know, because it's like at some point you you are kind of at the mercy of your snapper and your holder to to consistently and effectively kick the ball. I'm not saying that's the issue with what these guys had. But at the same time, a guy's process can be exactly the same. And depending on the other variables around him, he might be a 78% kicker. Or he might be an 89% kicker. Uh, nine, 11 teams last year were 90% or better make kick and field goals. And... I don't know. I have high expectations for these kickers in the NFL. I and and kickers are typically good until they're not. Can these guys bounce back? Right, and they'll get opportunity, right? Because I think there's a lot of teams that are nervous about their kicker situation across the league, so they'll get chances. What do they do with it? I mean, think about um, Daniel Carlson, right? Like what he was originally with Minnesota. He goes to, to the Raiders. He's like one of the best kickers in the league. Yeah. So like we'll see, but. I don't want to spend uh, too much time there, but that's interesting. I, to me. I don't know, dude. Like Dallas got Brandon Aubrey off the street, right? There's all different ways all to find it. Right? Pro, best kicker in the league was unbelievable. 10 for 10 beyond 50 last year. Yeah. Just aut- an automatic kicker. They found him kicking what XFL. Yeah. Well, did he even do that? He was like from Australia or something. And then remember they had the kicker that had the yips couldn't even make an extra point. Remember this? One of the most ridiculous things you've ever seen. <laughs> yes. What the heck was that guy's name? McMain? It was it? Mc... I don't remember his name. I don't want to throw him under the bus. But all right, don't throw the wrong guy under the bus. Yeah, uh, yeah. For the for the record, Aubrey was in the USFL okay. and was it was like his only year two time USFL champion in twenty two and twenty three. You know what the good thing about field goals and scouting it is it either goes in or it doesn't. You know what I mean? Kind right. of an easy thing to <laughs> yeah di- dynamic motion. You know I don't know what the hell you talk about with that, but. So um, Aubrey, first round 2017 MLS draft by Toronto FC. This guy's this guy's a Incredible kicker through journey. and through. Came, came in last year, 28 year old rookie kicker, best kicker in the league. So I guess there's also it feels like there's vets that even if they're at the end stage and their legs aren't as big as they used to be, you can find a guy. I, I think I'm gonna fall into me, Justin Tucker, one of the most uniquely valuable players in the league. Do you like how I'm playing with my daughter's hairbrush too, by the way? Buddy, I get it. I get it. I got a bath bomb. I got a bath bomb toy here, you know. <laughs> I just realized I just held it up and pointed at myself with it and people <laughs> the handle here. And they're like, better go and clarify what the hell that is, right? Yeah, no, I got a little hairbrush here. My daughter brought it in for me, so I'm playing with it. Um me, Justin Tucker, like uniquely valuable player and weapon in the NFL, is now saying, I don't think I would ever draft a specialist. This is coming from our debate of uh, what was it, the Justin Kick Tucker trade? Yeah, I always yeah, said like, I wouldn't what would do you it. Trade for Justin Tucker, and you're like, I wouldn't. I just simply wouldn't. wouldn't do it. Yeah, I wouldn't. <laughs> right, I still may, and I feel like you're coming onto my side of this. Well, Brandon Aubrey's changing some things for me. Nah, very good. Yeah. Um, 
speaking of change, how about this 2023 Washington Commanders draft class? That's going to go down as just a flush. We've, I mean, are already KJ Henry gone. Ricky Stromberg, third round pick gone. gone. No, you don't see the path for Forbes or Martin. That's a tough man. It's tough. I mean, obviously Washington's been through it in a regime change and I get all that, but like, you'd like to be able to look and, and identify parts of that that can help you, but they're going to have, I mean, even the year before with like Jahan Dotson and Phi Mathis, like you're going to, you're going to have multiple draft classes in a row that just are not going to help your football team. And that's going to, I think it's going to make it a, a further uphill climb for them to get it going. How about how cursed do you think John Ridgeway feels that he, he came into Dallas with Dan Quinn and they got rid of him. And then he goes to Washington and Dan Quinn comes to Washington. And now they're trying to get rid of Richway in Washington. It's a tough scene. You never, you probably never thought, saw that coming as a possibility, right? Yeah. I don't know. Dan, Dan Quinn is one of, that's going to be a fascinating team because they, they spend some money. They have some really intriguing pieces. They move on from Jahan Dotson, get what they can. Um, Jaden Daniels, just, I, I just I'm watching Will Campbell, their their left tackle on film, and you see all of the dynamic play. And then I remember seeing him in the preseason and I had joint practices and, and I had that exposure to him. I think he's, as long as he plays responsibly and doesn't expose himself to unnecessary risk, I think he's one of the more fascinating players in the league this year. They're, they're a total wild card team for me. Um, but then you look at the roster and the corners are St. Juice, Michael Davis, Emmanuel Forbes, Noe Benogany, and Mike Samrasil. That's the corners on this team. Right. The wide receivers is Terry McLaurin, Diami Brown, Olamide Zacchaeus, James, Jameson Crowder, Byron Pringle, and a third round pick in Luke McCaffrey. I don't know. I, I don't know. I could see it going good and I could see it go bad. I feel like we need to shout out Tony Jefferson. Made the Chargers initial 53. Like, out of nowhere, come back from the league. Uh, played, what, 2013 through 2022. Injuries like crazy. Yep. yep. It's really starting in 2019. He never played that frequently. Made the Chargers initial 53. That's a cool story. Did you see um, Lawrence Guys taking a visit to the Ravens today, too? That'd be a nice pickup for them. I, I thought we were kind of told that he was. Yeah, we kind of were under the impression that he was going to be done. Right. And he got the itch. He's like, ah, you know what? Training camp's over. Don't, but don't you see this nice happen sometimes? And guys sign, and then three days later, they retire. I'm like, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah. I mean, shoot, Shaq Barrett. Yeah. I mean, I, five, I did. $5 million signing bonus. And uh, you know what? <laughs> Brandon <laughs> Shell. Never, never mind. <laughs> Brandon Shell. Anquan Bolden. Legends, legends of the game. Absolute <laughs> legends. <laughs> what else you got? My list is exhausted. AJ Dillon's out for the year. Yeah. Oh, so man, Marshall, that, that's, big... a, that's a neck. Yeah. And he got, he was brought back on a one year deal. So he's yeah. probably done in green Bay. Yeah. Mark, big, big opportunity for Marshawn Lloyd, of course, behind Josh Jacobs. Certain Packers will be fine. Um, yeah, they're they're both top two running backs in the yeah. NFL, right? Like, it'll be fine. Yeah, Lewis seen cut first round pick. Safety I had a, I have I have a follow up on Josh on Josh Jacobs and the Packers, but I want to look it up. So just give me a sec. Okay, I'll continue to say things that are interesting. Jelani Woods back to back years on uh, season ending injured reserve, promising oh, start. Out. Yeah, oh, promising out. start for him as a rookie, and then two years in a row just nothing. That's disappointing. Dalvin Cook's working out with the Dallas Cowboys. I mean. Why not? I mean, da Zeke Elliott and Dalvin Cook is your running back tandem, Kyle Krabs. I mean, what, what could go wrong there? That looks interesting. Samaj P. Ron cut 50 okay. catches last year. I okay. got it. And it's the Josh Jacobs contract. All right. He's here this year. A.J. Dillon's obviously down. Marshawn Lloyd, what was a fourth round pick? Yep. Promising player, but durability is kind of a question. Are they just are they they're not are they just not gonna ride Josh Jacobs into the ground this year? They he has should. no he has no guarantee money after this year. Yeah. I think he just a signed idea. a four year forty eight million dollar contract and has no guarantee money after this year. I think that was probably the cost of doing business, right? Correct. 
But if if you're Green Bay, I mean, he's got a roster bonus that's due the fifth day of the league calendar year. But he had a twelve and a half million dollar signing bonus and twelve and a half million dollars in guarantees. That's it. He got a signing bonus this year. That's it. They can write. They could do four hundred carries and then say, "Say la vie, thank you." Probably will. The Packers, I, I probably would. Yeah. Kind of dress up a deal, and then re- reality, it's a one year deal, and move on. And maybe Marshawn Lloyd will show you enough. He's your lead back. Draft some other guy to be his compliment, and move on with your life. Enjoy right. Jordan Love and the legacy that's ahead. Stop. <laughs> I can't. My my larger takeaway here being. Um, and to, to Josh Jacobs, credit, I didn't realize this, um, through his first five seasons in the NFL, he made less than $24 million and he gets 50% of what he made in his first five years this year in Green Bay. I'm guessing last year was pretty good on the cap or was it the tag, right? It was uh, like it was 11, million. 11.79 million last year was what he played for. So he's made. Of his career earnings, he made half of that last year. Oh God! What and then he's doing? making another half of it. Yeah, yeah. It was he made as much in last year as his previous four seasons combined, and then he's getting fifty percent of his career earnings across wow. five years this year. Save your money, Josh. So, so it's probably money. not a bad thing for Josh Jacobs either. Like, hey, yeah. I'm healthier this year than I was last year. We're going to tote the rock. I'm going to get 350 touches. I'm still going to be 26 years old. Yeah, somebody will he'll get 10, he'll get 10, 12 million dollars next year, right? If he gets cut, he'll go and he has a good year, which which don't you see him kind of going back and getting 10, 11, 12 so. million? Yeah. You would think so. Yeah. Just keep bouncing around, taking it one year at a time. So that's all I got. You good? I'm good. All right, let's get out of here. I'm Kyle Krabs. He is Joe Marino. You can find us on YouTube or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. We appreciate you guys for checking out the show. We are going to continue to break down some of the shuffling across the league. But tomorrow, we're putting on our draft hats and looking at three top-level prospects for the 2025 NFL Draft. LSU offensive tackle, Will Kimball, Colorado question player. mark player, Travis Hunter, <laughs> and Michigan defensive tackle, Mason Graham coming your way tomorrow. We're going to be breaking those guys down and what we see in them. We're looking forward to that. We hope you will come back and join us as well. But that is it for today. We're out of here.